Do you want to know how I cooked up this little abomination in Blender? Don't worry, in this video, I'll break down my whole process to help you cook up your own little abominations too. This is inspired by La Cruzo's video on YouTube, and with that said, let's get into it. Before modeling, I began by scribbling out a reference in Krita. I drew inspiration from this drawing by Pru Art on Instagram and the Prince from the Prince of Persia for my base sketch. I really like this kanji character on the shirt in Prue's art, so I combined it with the face and hair of the prince. And I threw in some colors to my sketch, just to give myself an idea of what I want my character's color palette to look like. With that out of the way, I threw the drawings into Blender and started blending. I added a cylinder with 8 segments and added a mirror modifier to it. Then I pushed and pulled some vertices around, added loop cuts and extruded faces to create the basic shape of the torso and the arms. After that, I added a circle object with 6 segments, added a mirror modifier to it, and extruded it upwards to create the legs of this little dude. I joined the legs in the middle of the crotch area and created the shoes as well. Then I joined the torso and leg objects into a single object and merged the vertices where the legs and the torso should connect. Now my character was still missing a head, so that's what I created next. I modeled the head by first adding a cube, then applying a subdivision surface modifier to it. And I added a mirror modifier as well. And then I pushed and pulled vertices again to form the shape of the head. To create the hair, I selected some faces of the head and separated it into a different object. I ended up creating two different hair objects for my model here, one for the scalp and one for the actual hair clumps. I did not join the head and the hair with the rest of the body because I thought it would be easier to UV unwrap and rig later on. Speaking of UV unwrapping, let's talk about that. I hate it. I hate UV unwrapping. But I still did it. And how did I do it? Well, firstly, I added seams in places I thought would make the most sense. For example, to separate the shirt from the pants and to separate the pants from the shoes. And also in places where you would find seam lines in actual pieces of clothing. Next, I applied the mirror modifier on the body object so my seams would be applied on both sides. And I unwrapped every object into one single texture map to keep things nice and simple. It took quite a bit of fiddling around with the UV islands and the unwrapping process before I was happy with what I had. The UV map might horrify some of you, but please don't leave. <laughs> I shrunk the UV islands for the parts that don't require any detail and reserved more area for the parts like the face and the shirt where I needed to draw in the details. Once the UV map was looking less horrifying, I moved on to adding colors to my model. To add the colors, I started by first selecting each part of the model and filling it with the base colors for that part. Then I roughly drew in the facial features, the designs for the shirt, and other details, just to give myself an idea. I also created the black outlines you see using the inverted hull method before bringing the texture map into Krita. I scribbled out the facial features and the designs in Krita and imported it back into Blender and then applied it to my model. You might have noticed I did not paint the shadows on my texture map and this is because I wanted to create a custom shader for this little dude and have the shadows dynamically change based on the light setup. To create the shader, I started by adding a diffuse BSDF node and connecting it to a shader to RGB node. Then I linked that to a color ramp and set the interpolation to constant for that hard shadow look. Next I connected the color ramp to the factor input of a mix node and then plugged in the texture map to one of the color slots. I added another mix node to darken the texture to create the shadow color and then plugged it to the second color slot of my main mix node. Finally, I connected this whole setup to the surface of the material output, and this is the result of that. And with that, our model is complete. Okay, this is all fine and dandy, but I also want to be able to pose this cutie. 
So I used the rigify add-on to quickly create a basic rig for this little guy. I'm not gonna yap much about the rigging and weight painting process, but just know that I spent an unholy amount of time messing with the weight painting of this model. Rigging and weight painting are whole nother skill sets on their own, and I'm not the best at it, but Blender's automatic weight painting really does a very decent job, so I'm not really sure why I decided to get my hands dirty with it. But either way, this is what I ended up cooking in the last couple of days. Uh, it took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to get to this end result, so a sub to the channel would be very epic. But maybe you're not into low poly characters. Maybe you're into sculpting and creating realistic characters. Well, if that is you, you should watch this video next, where I go over the blockout process of creating realistic male and female characters in Blender. So yeah, see you there.